Hello everyone, iSchool Tech here. Today we're going to be taking a look at how the iPhone SE first generation has been holding up on iOS 13.5. Now before we get into the video, if you do happen to be new to the channel, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button with notifications turned on to stay up to date with all the latest news, announcements, and of course updates from Apple, as well as reviews, tutorials, and more from iSchool Tech. Every subscriber truly does mean a lot, it's very appreciated. Timestamps are in the description if you'd like to use them. Anyways, let's get straight into the video. Now iOS 13.5 is the first .5 milestone update in iOS history, and it will be the last milestone update to iOS 13 before the release of iOS 14. This update brought some new features, including an easier way to unlock Face ID while wearing a mask, introduces the first iteration of Apple and Google's Exposure Notification API for contact tracing, and introduces a way to control automatic prominence of video tiles in a group FaceTime call. This update also adds an option to automatically share health and other essential information from your medical ID with emergency services when you place an emergency call. This feature is currently only available to users here in the United States. This update also brings some bug fixes and security improvements, such as an issue where data would fail to be secured while using a VPN and or a mail vulnerability where a user could gain remote access to the target user's inbox by simply sending an email. Now, of course, the first thing I do want to talk about is performance as always. Now, performance while running iOS 13.5 on my iPhone SE has been the same as previous iOS releases, including previous builds of the iOS 13.4.5 and iOS 13.5 beta. It hasn't improved, but it hasn't decreased in any way either. And this is, of course, a good thing as the iPhone SE did perform very well in these previous iOS 13 releases, especially when you take in the age of the device. Now, of course, animations is a different story. Right off the bat with iOS 13.5, I noticed that animations such as opening and closing the notification and control centers, closing out apps in the multitasking screen, scrolling through apps and web pages, and swiping through the home screen, etc. all perform very smoothly. I have not noticed any major stuttering or lag while doing any of these tasks. Now, in comparison to iOS 13.5 Developer Beta 4, it is safe to say that there has been some improvement here. Before we get into battery life, I'd like to take a second to mention that my iPhone SE is running off of a maximum battery capacity of 91% and has had a restart. However, I have manually disabled performance throttling in the battery health settings, meaning that my iPhone is not being performance throttled to maintain battery life and prevent restarts. In terms of screen on time, I have noticed a very slight battery drain. This battery drain is very insignificant, however, so it's really nothing to worry about as of right now. It's so insignificant that you can still pull off a full day with light use while running iOS 13.5 on the iPhone SE first generation. Now, if you are a medium user, I'd recommend keeping a spare charger with you as you may need to charge the iPhone throughout the day a few times. And naturally, if you are a heavy user, I'd strongly recommend you use a battery case or keep an extra charger with you as you'll likely have to charge the iPhone regularly throughout the day. As for standby, I have noticed a pretty significant battery drain. My iPhone SE lost 24% last night while on standby time. This is perhaps the most drain I've seen overnight on this iPhone in a while. Now, if you charge your phone overnight anyway, then this isn't really going to affect you, but either way, this is certainly not a good sign, and I'll continue to monitor this and see if it gets better, worse, or stays the same with time. Should you update? Well, if you're on an older version of iOS 13 or plan to install the iOS 14 beta on June 22nd anyway, then I'd say there's no reason not to. If you're on an older version of iOS 13 and you don't plan on installing the beta of iOS 14 or you don't use iCloud family sharing, then I'd say now's the time to update. I say if you don't use iCloud family sharing as there is a bug introduced with iOS 13.5 that will result in apps failing to launch for users who use iCloud family sharing. If you're on iOS 12 or older, I'd strongly suggest staying there if you can, of course, as it's much more stable. Overall, performance has been just fine and animations have even seen an improvement with this update. Battery life has mostly remained the same with the exception of the standby time drain, of course. Now, as always, if you do have any questions, definitely make sure to leave a comment down below. Alright everyone, that's all I have for this video. If you did enjoy the video or find that helpful in any way, show me by leaving a like. And if you are new to the channel, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. Every subscriber really does mean a lot, it's very appreciated. Don't forget to check out the iSchool Tech official Discord, link in the description down below as always. Also make sure to follow me on Twitter using the link in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.